gentle people and welcome to this Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. If this is your first time visiting my channel or if you are a returning subscriber, I hope that you will pick up some tips and I don't know tricks that will enhance your creativity. I'm Hazel, a retired educator and self-taught resident artist turned entrepreneur. And every week I share how I create the products that are available in my Etsy shop and my Shopify boutique. I'm adding new holiday and special occasion gifts to my shops each week. This week I received an order to create a set of six Hanukkah beverage coasters. You can see the online listing. Uh, blue coasters embellished with a menorah. So that's what we're going to create today. As always, if you like what you see but don't want to take the time to make it yourself, please feel free to purchase it at SparrowArtVibes.Boutique. Also, if you are inspired by my video, please do like, share, and if you're not a subscriber, please do subscribe. Um, I'm slowly marching toward the 1,000 subscriber mark, uh, but we're getting there. So anyway, let's take a look at the materials that we need to make this Hanukkah beverage coaster set. Let's take a look at the materials that we need to make our Hanukkah beverage coasters. Uh, these are square coasters, so I have six square uh, silicon coaster molds. Uh, you can see that two are like newer, they're whiter, newer, whatever, whatever. Uh, besides our coasters. And this week, I am going back to the very first resin that I ever used, and that's the Envirotex Light. That's the part A. And Envirotex Light Hardener, the part B. Uh, the reason I have gone back to that is because, believe it or not, Michael's, where I purchased the um, Craftsmart, has not had the gallon size Craftsmart resin at either the Daytona Beach or the Port Orange store in over a week and a half. Um, trucks come in on Wednesdays and Thursdays. They didn't get any in last week. They didn't get any in this week. And I have a bunch of orders to fill, so I did the next best thing. Went back to where I started, Envirotex Light. We need large measuring cups. And I have two, I'll tell you why in a minute. Stir sticks for those two large measuring cups. We need one large paper cup. Two smaller paper cups. And that's for our mica powders. We are going to be using the Eye Candy Dark Ocean Blue. I was going to, I've usually used the Pearl X Pearl White, but this week I got a brand new mica powder that I want to try. And that is the Eye Candy Satori White. Now again, I don't know if the camera can capture those uh, close enough. The Pearl X has almost a slight gray to it, but this Satori White almost looks like snow. So we're going to try this. You can see it hasn't even been open. Brand spanking new Satori White. And then we're going to be using a little teeny bit of the Nodway Chameleon Blue Cyan just to give it a tint of sparkle. I need the stir sticks for the mica powder and I left off my nitro gloves. And I actually have a new um, brand of water slide decal paper that I'm going to be trying. So we need our water slide decal paper. And that's it. We'll get this off the table and get started. Okay, so before we get started, um, I always encourage you to follow the manufacturer's instructions. This week we are using Envirotex Light, their um, high gloss pour-on resin. And 
our directions tell us like with the craft smart that you need to measure equal amounts of side A and side B which would be a one-to-one -one ratio uh, then it tells you just stir but it says let me get to it uh, after two full minutes of mixing pour the contents into a second container using a new stir stick mix the contents of the second container another two minutes again scraping the side so it's two minutes and two minutes but the reason we have two measuring um, bowls two measuring cups is because their directions tell you mix in this one for two minutes and then pour that into another one so again we're going to follow their directions okay we have um, six moles and each mole requires 80 milliliters of resin so 8 times 6 is 48 so that's 480 milliliters and so I always mark my amounts needed uh, you can't really get a 480 on here accurately so I have marked the 500 the 250 and the 500 and that leaves us 20 extra milliliters that we can make into a bookmark or something so, okay, so we are going to follow their instructions and we are going to pour 250 milliliters of the Part B hardener. So, yep, so we're going to do 250. And then we need 250 milliliters of the Part A resin. And then their instructions say to mix for two minutes. So, the Envirotex light says take the resin that you've mixed in this container, pour it into a separate container. And so since we're following manufacturer's directions, and the reality is you probably don't have, I mean, I think I did this for like the first five or six months that I used Envirotex Lite and then I just stopped pouring it into a second container figuring if I really thoroughly mixed it in the first one I wouldn't have any difficulty and I didn't have um, but if I'm showing you and I say follow directions then I need to demonstrate following those directions. So that bowl and that stir stick, so now we have a new stir stick as they requested. And now we're going to mix for another two minutes. All right, and so now we are going to add our mica powders. And so we want, oh, let's do it the other way. We want some of the blue cyan in this cup. We want some of our new white in this cup. And then the rest will be our blue. Actually, I've got a little more I'm gonna have to mix separately, but that's okay. these sticks that way I don't knock stuff over uh, when the sticks are tall I have repeatedly knocked 
touch the stick and flip the cup of resin over and you can't save that. Always make sure to get all the mica powder off your stick. So that's our blue cyan. And so now we are going to open our um, our Satori White. And guess what? This is not mica powder. Look at me not paying attention. This is not mica powder. This is a paste. I did not pay attention. When I ordered this, I was not paying attention. I put white mica powder in the search bar and this came up. And so I selected this, but this is not mica powder. This is a paste. And now that I'm looking at the label closely, it does say paste. And usually with the paste, you don't need but a little bit to get the color that you want. So let's, let's see what we're doing here. I did not know this was a paste. I typed in white mica powder and this is what came up. And I chose it because it looked really white. It had a snowy white to it. I used alcohol inks for a little while, but my favorite color, colorant, is definitely mica powder. So I don't know that this is going to give me the effect that I was looking for. That's a lesson in reading. Reading descriptions carefully. All right, and then our blue. We are using our dark ocean blue. to be blue but I don't want it to be so blue that you can't see the decal. Look at all that mica powder on my stick. Okay. That was a surprise. So we're going to set our molds up. to start by just pouring this cyan, this blue cyan into the rim of these. Like I said, this will give a little bit of sparkle. bit of the um, I had some resin left over uh, because I mixed 500 milliliters so I'm gonna mix a little more of the um, blue cyan to use inside the mold all right so here we go I don't know how this white paste will work but we're gonna use it anyway okay so we're going to do these in um, layers all right, so we are going to start by pouring some ooh, blue, these large cups, man. That's why I use little cups. So we've got our blue, then let's add some cyan into that.
change that. Okay. Ooh, that's different. Ooh, that is totally going to change what I was going for. Ah, that's very white. I mean, that's what I wanted, very white, but because it's a paste and not a mica powder, it's acting differently. Oh, oh, that means, let me see. Okay, so. What we're doing is pouring colors inside each other. how these are going to turn out because that white totally has thrown me for a loop but it's mixed so we're not wasting resin we're going to use it but that's um that's different Not one of these is round. Hmm. These are supposed to be round to make a ring. Uh, clearly I don't have my ring. Now I moved these one time and look. Uh, let's twist this again. I think I had it right the first time. I don't know why it didn't roll like it was supposed to.
My resin is warming up. I'm at my end of my work. I didn't even talk about the work time for the Envirotex light, but this stuff is getting thick on me. I didn't talk about work time. I'll have to go back and check that and tell you what the work time is for this. All right, um, not quite what I planned, um, and that happens sometimes. So let's pop these air bubbles there, 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 big bubble there, there, big huge bubble, big bubbles there, 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 big old bubbles there, there. Let's pop these air bubbles with the heat gun. All right, so I have no idea what these are going to look like having used the paste instead of mica powder. But um, we're going to cover these and allow them to cure overnight, and then we will do the uh, decals. I 
I am back and it is time to uncover and unmold these and well that's interesting uh, that is not quite what I expected but it's the other side that we are mostly interested in and let's see what these look like having been done with a paste rather than with mica powder okay the, that's the back side and let's see what we're working with here So much that's okay it's got the sheen that I needed and wanted but it has kind of a, a muddy milky look to it I'm not satisfied when we turn it over yeah I know that paste nope 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 that is not what I was trying to do All right, somebody who likes blue would take these. That almost looks like the galaxy or something. Uh, yeah, that is not what I wanted. That's, that center there, though, is really pretty. That blue cyan, that's gorgeous. Yeah, that's not what I wanted. nope all right this is an order for a customer and since this is a customer's order uh, and I'm not satisfied with this I am going to put this in my inventory uh, and sell it as like the blue galaxy or something I don't know the Milky Way I, I, I don't know I don't like this so what I'm going to do is mix some more resin and I'm going to pour it again this time I am going to use mica powder my pearl X mica powder okay so off camera I mixed um, a new thing of resin mixed and poured this a second time uh, I'm going to hit this with the heat gun pop these air bubbles all right, I can tell you right now, this definitely looks better. You don't have that white, um, that white ring. I just really don't like those other coasters. Um, so we are going to cover these and allow them to cure uh, overnight. And then tomorrow we will unmold these and see if this is what I was trying to get. And then we'll attach our artwork. All right, all right, gentle people. Let's take the cover off of this. And remember, this is a re-pour. Let me let you see what the backs of the other ones, the first set I did, looked like. Let me set these over here. And then let's see if this is more what I was going for. That's the back side. That absolutely. That's what we want. That's exactly what I want. Look at the difference. This is nice and clear and shimmery, and this has a kind of milky thing going on. So again, the backs of both of them with that white. Remember, this was the white. This was the white paste that I bought by mistake. Um, and this is done with uh, the Pearl X white mica powder. So you can see how different the outcome is. This is what we want. So let's unmold the rest of these. The back is pretty. Look at that, that's very nice. 
That's very nice. So again, you basically, you can't sell someone something, well, I guess you could, but I wouldn't sell someone something, yeah, I like that. I would not sell someone something that I was not completely satisfied with. Yeah, 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 that's what we want. There we go. So I'm glad I re-poured this. So now what we need to do is try and get the artwork, get the artwork on here. And let's see, said the blind man. So I have the artwork. We're just going to cut these. And then I put the little frame around so I know the exact size that I need. And so we're just going to cut that border or that frame off. have our water. We're going to drop this in there. I hope I sprayed those enough. I'm almost out of um, I'm almost out of my gloss sealer. So I hope I sprayed that enough to keep my design. Because you print these um, you print these on uh, water slide inkjet paper and then once it dries the instructions tell you that you need to spray seal these all right let's see what this first one let's see if this first one will slide like it's supposed to oop that looks good Sure you don't let your corners curl up on you. excess water I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back to that one since it kind of developed a mind of its own. Let's do this again. sure why that did what it did. Okay, so that works. So now, oops, watch the water. See the drips? So what we want to do is just squeegee out the water from underneath the decal. And 
when you do this, you want to, when you do this correctly, done correctly, your decal should be perfectly, perfectly smooth. It should look like it's a part of And you'll notice that I'm squeegeeing from the center to the outs outer edges. And you can reposition this while it's wet. Okay, so you get the idea. You do not have to watch me do every single one of these. And make sure that your edges, make sure that the edges of your artwork are smooth. Sometimes you'll wind up with little wrinkles along the edge. That's perfect. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we want. Okay, so let's do, let's cut these other ones out. I don't know, can you hear the squeak? Can you hear the squeegee? <laughs> And a lot of times it helps where these are square with the rim. If you push the moisture out and you push it to the, to the edge, then if you turn the coaster on its side, it's easier to get that extra water out of there. And make sure, always make sure your artwork is straight. That's the other thing. You don't want crooked. You don't want the menorah looking like it's drank, had a lot of wine to drink. So the center of that is really nice and smooth. So now we want to just work on these edges. Okay, and now to figure this darn thing out, let's see. We may have to make a new one. Yep, sometimes when you're trying to save something, it just um, takes too much time. So it's easier to just go print a new one. from the center to the outer edges. Okay, so there they are. And 
So I'll let these dry for about an hour and then we'll come back and we'll pour our clear coat. All right, gentle people. Uh, the artwork on these has uh, dried and so now we just need to put the clear coat on to seal. When I do the clear coat, I always do 10 milliliters per coaster, which will be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Um, these are new measuring cups, so it's hard to see, but I have marked 30 and 60 on here. And so we are going to pour 30 milliliters of the Part B hardener. milliliters of the Part A resin. Now again, Envirotex Light tells you to mix for two minutes, pour this into another measuring cup, and then mix for another two minutes. Um, we are going to shortcut that and we are simply going to do our regular CraftSmart five minute mix. just in case there's resin on my gloves. I don't want to mess up anything. All right, so all we are going to do is pour some resin into the center of each of these. I did this the other day and this stuff came out like molasses. So you know it's warmer in here today. Your room temperature should be 70 degrees if you're working with resin. Otherwise, you have to put your resin in a warm, uh, warm water bath, not boiling water, not boiling water. Just run a pan of hot water. Run a pan of hot water. And then set your bottles of resin in that for about 10 minutes and let the temperature increase. Right, and then you know you you know heard me say I like to just tilt my um, coasters. I like to just tilt them and let the resin do its thing. You can spread your resin with popsicle sticks. I discourage that simply because you wind up tearing your artwork. take our heat gun to pop the air bubbles. Okay, so we are going to cover these, allow them to cure for about four hours, and then we will sand the edges, add our rubber bumps, and they will be complete. Okay, okay, okay. Let's uncover our Hanukkah coasters. They look nice. I like, I like, I like. That is gorgeous. So what we need to do now is just sand these back edges and add our rubber bumps and we will be through. We need 
need to get the dust off of these. I, that's that's gorgeous and of course once these are sanded we use our Dora clear gloss varnish and we just go just a dab a little bit in there and then we just go in and we just paint the sanded edge so it doesn't look white and sanded How you finish your work is as important as ooh. how you finish your work is as important as the work itself. And this varnish dries quickly, so And I am always using the 3M rubber bumps. Again, you will see online people will post that they have made coasters and they put cork on the back so it protects the table from scratches. That's true. However, cork, when it gets old, it dries out and it will start to crumble and you'll start to see dust on your table. Um, the other thing is once the cork gets wet, it's basically useless. So just putting that, um, just putting that out there, that, uh, and the rubber bumps that I use are great because they are non-skid. So once you put them on your coasters and you put them on the table, they're not going to slide. When you are putting these bumps on, do not put the bumps in the corner. Move them in about a quarter of an inch. And you want them in a quarter of an inch because if you want to stack these to store, then they will fit on top of each other nice and neatly. Oops, let me turn that so you can see. They'll fit. But if you put the bumps right on the edges, that bump on that edge is going to rest on here and then it'll be higher. They cannot stack. So let's get these on here. We are done and all we need to do now is take a couple of uh, finished photos and that's it.